lesson and the title of today's lesson is the host of heaven the host of heaven we have a or well, i have a definition which is you got several de definitions for the word host but the definition that fits this lesson is host functions it functions as a noun meaning a multitude or a great number. So more than one. That is the definition for the word host that we're using for the host of heaven. And some examples out of the Bible dealing with the host of heaven, the children of Israel were called the host of heaven, I mean the, called the host of the Lord in Exodus the 12th chapter, and you can read that Exodus 12 and verse 41 when they came out of Egypt. Also, the angels that came, the angel that came to Joshua in Joshua the fifth chapter was called the captain of the Lord's host. The captain of the Lord's host of angels. And also, last but definitely not least, the Lord our Savior, Jesus Christ, he is called the Lord of hosts. So again, with that definition, host is a multitude or a great number. So we're going to take a look at the host of heaven. And the first question we're going to come to is, is are people in heaven? The first place we're going to is, is John, the third chapter. And we're going to read one verse. Verse 13. John 3. And we're going to read one verse. Verse 13. And we're going to see has man or woman went to heaven or is in heaven now. When you get it, Matt, give me John 3, verse 13. And no man. Oh, how many men? And no man. Did what? Had ascended up to heaven. Yes. But he that came down from heaven, even the son of man which is in heaven. So we see that what? No man has Ascended to heaven. Plain and simple. Is that right and red, Matt? Yes, sir. That's red writing right there. Yes, sir. Read that one more time. And no man hath ascended up to heaven. Yes. But he that came down from heaven. Uh-huh. Even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. Yes, so we see the Son of Man, he's in heaven now. So let's go to our next place. Let's go to First Timothy. The sixth chapter, and we're going to read verses 13 through 16. Because everybody want to go to heaven. Everybody want to be in heaven. It sounds good, but is it true? First Timothy, the, the sixth chapter, First Timothy 6, and we're going to read verses 13 through 16. When you get it, Matt, please read. I give thee charge in the sight of God, who quickeneth all things, and before Christ Jesus, before Pontius Pilate, witness a good confession. Yes. That thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. So it's telling you to keep what? This commandment without spot. That's telling you to what? To diligently seek the Lord and do all you can to keep his commandments. We know that all have sinned. We know this. But it told you right here to keep it without spot. Mm -hmm. We even know David broke the commandments. But he was known as a man what? After God's own heart. So that's just something to you to think about to keep yourself in line even when you fall. Get back up. Don't lay down soaking in your uh, misery or your sin or whatever it is you did. Get up. Yes, sir. Read, Matt. Which in his times he shall show who is the blessed and only potent king of kings and lord of lords. Yes, what? Who only Wait have immortality. Who, who only have immortality. Yes. Dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto. So no man can approach unto that light that they claim they approach to. That they saw. Read, Matt. 
whom no man has seen. Whoa, it didn't even tell you no man has seen that light. So the only light you saw was maybe when you passed out the light that was above your head when you was on the ground. But you had seen this light. Finish it up, Matt. Nor can see to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. So it tell you that you can't see that light. So I remember even when I had surgery, the last thing I saw was that light that was above my head. That bright shining light. And that light's so bright that you can't see nothing else in the room. Because it's a light that the doctor needs for surgery. So he can see what he's doing. But that was the last light I remember. I remember asking that lady, how long is it going to take for... <laughs> and I was gone. Me looking at that light and saying no words was the last thing I remember. So you can't even approach this light. You can't even see it. Let's go to Acts, the second chapter. Acts 2, we're going to read one verse in this as well. Acts 2 and verse 29. So we said, I said earlier, that David, what, was a man after God's own heart. So it seemed like a man that was after God's own heart, seemed like he would go up to heaven. He would be in heaven. Right. But let's see what the book say. Acts 2 and 29, when you get it, Mac, read. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried. Uh -huh. and, Go ahead. And his skeptical is with us until this day. That's right. And his sceptical, which is his grave, his tomb, where he's buried, is still with us this day as well. He's dead and buried. So he is not in heaven, a man after God's own heart. So how can you put your loved ones and everyone else there? They are in the grave, buried as well. Yeah, man. Like I said, sounds good, but it's not true. So now let's stay in the book of Acts, and we're going to go to the 13th chapter. This is a very simple lesson. All you got to do is read your book. Acts 13, and we're going to read verses 22 and 23. Acts the 13th chapter. And we're going to read verses 22 and 23. When you get it, Matt, please read. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king. Uh -huh. To whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. Uh-huh, there which, it is. Go ahead. Which shall fulfill all my will. Uh-huh. Of this man's seed have God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a Savior, Jesus. Yes. So that Savior, Jesus, where is he? He's sitting on the right hand of the Father. So you have two that's in heaven. You got the Father and you got the Son. And then you got what? The angels as well. So you got what? Three heavens that most people only know of what? One. But we're going to see who's in the third heaven. Let's go to 1 Kings, the 22nd chapter. And we're going to read one verse there. Verse 19. See, we was never taught that it was three heavens. We was only taught that it was one heaven. So we're going to see who's in the third heaven. Let's go to 1 Kings 22. And we're going to read one verse. Verse 19. See, in dealing with this 1 Kings 22, you got Micaiah prophesying to King Ahab of Israel and Jehoshaphat, king of Judah. So he's prophesying to both of them, but we're going to look at something that he said. 1 Kings 22, give me verse 19, Matt, when you get it. And he said, Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. 
I saw the Lord sitting on his throne uh -huh. and all the host of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. Whoa. So he said he saw him sitting on the throne and all the host of heaven. So who was that host again? You got the father, you got the son, and you got the angels. They are the host of heaven that's sitting in the third heaven. Let's look again. Let's go to Psalms, the 110th chapter. Psalms 110. So, little simple statements that's made can easily, simply be put to rest by opening the Bible and reading it. Too many verses in here that you can read showing who's in the third heaven. But you got, first of all, you got to know it's three. Psalms 110, 110th Psalm. Just give me one verse. Verse 1. Go ahead, Mac, when you get it. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Yes. So the Lord said unto his Lord, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand until I make thine enemies my footstool. So we're waiting on that time to come for him to make the enemies his footstool. And it's coming. That's going to be on his return where? Back here on this earth. So right now he's on the right hand of the Father in heaven. Amen. Simple. Let's go to Matthew the 26th chapter. Matthew 26. And we're going to read verses... 59 through 64. Matthew, the 26th chapter. And we're going to read verses 59 through 64. So in this one right here, we're going to see the sun in the clouds, and you're going to see him at his coming. Matthew 26, give me verse 59 when you get it, Matt. Now the chief priests and elders in all the council sought false witness against Jesus to put him to death. Yes. But none, but found none. Yeah, thou many, many false witnesses came, yet found they none. Yes. At the last came two false witnesses and said, this fellow said, I am able to destroy the, the temple of God and to build it in three days. So they was thinking that physical temple. But he was talking about his tabernacle. That's what he was talking about. Read. And the high priest arose and said unto him, Answerest thou nothing? What is it which this, these witnesses against thee? But Jesus held his peace. Uh -huh. And the high priest answered and said unto him, I adjure thee by the living God that thou tell us whether thou be the Christ, the Son of God. Yeah, so he adjured him, so he had to give him an answer. And let's see what his answer is. Read. Jesus said unto him, uh -huh. Thou hast said, Nevertheless, I say unto you, Yes. Hereafter shall ye see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Yes. So hereafter, you're going to see that same Son of Man that's sitting on the right hand. You're going to see him in the clouds coming from heaven. So we can go in several other places in this Bible and show you the coming of the king, the return of Jesus. But you still got people that don't understand and know that it's three heavens. So let's go to Colossians, the third chapter. Colossians, the third chapter. And we're going to read verses 1 through 4. Colossians 3. And we're going to read verses 1 through 4. So we also, and in reading this verse as well, we have to have our mindset on heavenly things till Christ appear. So 
What I like to say is that we have to have what's called kingdom goals. So we have to have goals to enter into the kingdom. But what kingdom are we going to enter into? We're going to see that in this lesson. Because we just saw you ain't going to the third heaven. So if it's three, it got to be two and one. Colossians 3, give me verse 1, Matt, when you get it. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Whoa, so we see it again, where he's sitting on the right hand of God. What else? Set your affliction on things above, not on things on the earth. Yes, so you got to have what? You got to have a heavenly mindset. Your mindset got to be on Christ at all times. Read. For ye are dead. And your life is hid with Christ in God. Yes, sir. Read. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Yes. Yeah, so do you see what that verse 3 said? It said, for ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. So what it's saying about you being dead, that former man or that old person supposed to be dead. Yes, sir. You're supposed to be walking in newness of life. You shouldn't be doing the things that you used to do. Amen. Again, you shouldn't just be showing up here just to be showing up here. To say, mark me present on the road. Because it said your life is what? Hid in Christ. Yes, sir. Read that for again, Matt. When Christ, who is our life. Yes, wait a minute. He is our life. So we should be living the life of Christ. If you want to know how to live the life of Christ, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Let you know what he did when he walked on this earth in this same flesh and blood body that we in. Read it again, Mac, from the top. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. So that's what we working on. To appear with him in glory in what? The first resurrection. Amen. That's what we're working on. We don't want to still be sleeping in the grave. No. We want to be raised when he returned. When he returned from where? The third heaven. Now, let's go to Hebrews, the first chapter. Hebrews, the first chapter, and we're going to read verses 1 through 3. So, Hebrews 1, we're going to read verses 1 through 3. We're going to see, after he purged our sins, we're going to see where he went. He went and sat on the right hand of what? The Father. Hebrews 3, I mean Hebrews 1. Give me verses 1 through 3, Matt, when you get it. God, who at sun-dry times and in divers manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir all things, uh -huh. by whom also he hath made the world. Yes. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, mm -hmm. upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins. Yes, he did. Sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Yes. So he sat down on the majesty on high. The only other people that's, well, I won't say people, but the only others that are in heaven is the angels. So we didn't see David. We didn't see Paul. We didn't see nobody else there. It didn't name Big Mama, Big Papa, nobody else. They still in the grave. So let's go to Genesis 28. We're going to pound this home because those that are watching, I hope you're taking notes as well. Go back and read over and study. Because it's all through this Bible. Genesis 28, we're going to start at verse 10. We're going to read 10 through 13. So we're going to see the angels of heaven ascending and descending. From the third heaven. Genesis 28. And we're going to read verses 10 through 13. Genesis 28. And we're going to read verses 10 through 13. When you get it, Matt, please read. 
And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. And he lighted up a certain place and tarried there all night, because the sun was set. And he took the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and laid down in that place to sleep. Yes. And I know those were some hard pillows. That was some hard sleep, but hey. <laughs> I know I got some pillows at home that's hard to sleep. I got about a thousand pillows. Now one of them sleep right. Go ahead. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to the heaven. Yes. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. Go ahead. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy, thy father, and the God of Isaac, the land whereon thou liest. To thee I, will I give it and to thy seed. Yes, so we see the angels ascending and descending from heaven and going back. But who do we see at the top of that ladder? We see the Lord at the top of that ladder. So that ladder's reaching, what? From the earth all the way to heaven. What they call Jacob's ladder. So you see who's in heaven. You see the angels and you see the Lord that's in heaven. We don't see Big Mom and Big Papa and them ascending and descending on that ladder. No, sir. We don't. They wait until their appointed time. It's an appointed time. Let's keep it moving. Let's go to Matthew 18. Matthew, the 18th chapter. Here we go, old and new. Like the book tell you, line upon line, line upon line. Here little, there little. Matthew 18, we're going to read verse 6, and then we're going to skip to verse 10. Matthew, the 18th chapter. We're going to read verse 6, and then we're going to skip down to verse 10. We're going to see the little ones, those that keep the commandments, mm -hmm. which should be us. Mm -hmm. We have an angel in heaven if we obedient. Because it talks about what the book tells you that what? Even Job, he had what? Hedges around him. So he had no bushes around him. He had angels around him. Amen. The angels encamp those that what? Keep the commandments. Matthew 18, give me verse 6 first, Matt. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hung about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. So I want you to think about this. I know y'all don't watch the mob movies where they tie that stone around you and drop you off in the water. So just imagine a millstone being around your neck and you thrown in the water. That's it. So it's best for you if you offend one of his little ones. You would rather have that done to you than to what? To deal with the wrath and the vengeance of the Lord. That's something to think about. Mm -hmm. Verse 10, Matt. Take heed that you despise not one of these little ones. Hey, you better take heed that you don't despise one of these little ones. Go ahead, Matt. For I say unto you, yes, that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. Who angels? Their angels. So you better be careful. Mm -hmm. They say what it say. Revelations 12. I don't have to interpret on that. Their angels. Revelations 12, and we're going to read verses 7 through 12. Because Satan couldn't even lay a hand on Job until them hedges was removed. His angels was removed from around him. And Satan knew it. Because obviously he tried to what? He tried to tempt him. Hey man, I can't do nothing with him. You got them hedges round about him. Revelations 12, but we got to be like Job too. So when we tried and persecuted, that we still stand. Just because we in this word, that don't mean that we ain't going to get tried. That don't mean that we ain't going to get persecuted falsely. 
That don't mean that ain't going to happen. But that's why we here to learn how to fight those battles when they come. To lean on our God. Revelations 12, and we're going to read verses 7 through 12. Revelations, the 12th chapter, we're going to read verses 7 through 12. We're going to look at the holy angels, and we're going to look at Satan when he was in heaven. Read, Matt. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, mm -hmm. and the dragon fought in his angels. So a lot of people don't know because they don't read that Satan was once in heaven. He was Lucifer, the light bringer. He, got, he had the job first that Gabriel now has. He brought the word. That's what he's supposed to have been doing while he was in heaven with the angels. But he was on over here. Hey, man, I don't know what they talking about. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. Y'all going to follow me, blah, 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 blah. And we saw what happened. Read, Matt. And prevailed not. Neither was there place found any more in heaven. So there was no place found for him no more in heaven. What, Matt? And the great dragon was cast out. Uh-huh. Here's some of his titles. That the great old dragon. Serpent. What? That old serpent called the devil. Called the devil. And the, Satan. The, the main titles we know, devil and Satan. What else? Which deceiveth the whole world. Whoa. Which deceiveth the whole, not some of the world. The whole world. The whole world. So if you say you haven't been deceived, you a liar. Mm -hmm. Read. He was cast out into the earth. Yes. And his angels were cast out with him. Uh-huh. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down. Yes. Which accused them before our God day and night. Whoa. So he was an accuser even in heaven. Day and night. And it tells you that we just read, it said in verse 9, it said he was cast out into the earth and his angels, his angels, so he took some with him, were cast out with him. What the book said, a third of a what? An innumerable, innumerable amount. So we don't know how many that is. Because trust me, if Jesus cast out one in the synagogue, Sorry, I got to be the bearer of bad news right now. It wasn't sitting to him right now. Don't let it be sitting next to you. Don't let him say, I want to get next to you and pull you close. You better push away with this word. Where we at, Matt? Top 11. Read it. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. Uh-huh. And hold, by me, hold up, Matt. How you going to overcome him? By the blood of the lamb. By the blood of the lamb. That's the only way you're going to overcome. Putting yourself under the blood of Jesus. Amen. I had somebody ask me that question. Hey, um, what's the meaning of the Passover? I say, hey, bro, you need to get to church. Amen. If you don't understand the meaning of the Passover, that's every year putting yourself under the blood of Jesus. Read. And by the word of their testimony. Yes. And they love not their lives unto death. Go ahead. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he had but a short time. Yeah, he know he got a short time, but it's one word in this verse that I want to take a look at. And it said, ye what? Heavens with a S. So again, like I said, it's three heavens. I didn't know it was three heavens. I always knew of one heaven. But it said heavens. So now we're going to take a look and see. We said it's three, but we're going to take a look and see how many heavens it is according to the word of God. So now let's go to 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. We're going to let the book tell us. So I ain't no telling what I might tell you off the top of my head. 2 Corinthians 12. And we're going to read verses 2 through 4. 
2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, and we're going to read verses 2 through 4. And we're going to take a look at the third heaven. 2 Corinthians 12, give me verse 2, Matt, when you get it. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago. Uh-huh. Whether in the body, I cannot tell. Or whether out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. Such an one caught up to the third heaven. Whoa. So y'all heard me say third heaven, third heaven, third heaven since I started this lesson. But I'm sure some that have never read it was probably saying, well, where he get that third heaven from? Out the book. Not out my head. Out the book. Read, Matt. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. Yes. How that he was caught up into paradise. Whoa, so we see the word paradise. So we even saw the word paradise when what? You had the thieves on the cross with Jesus. And he mentioned the word paradise. But that ain't the paradise that he was talking about. As we saw early in the lesson, it's going to be another paradise. And we're going to see where that, what's, what, what's, where that paradise is and where that paradise is coming. Let's take that from the top, Matt, four. How that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. Yes, which is not lawful for a man to utter. Because we see people that's going to come here and going to take that paradise and they're going to try to say that's where that thief was carried to and to the third heaven. But we just proved that wrong and we're going to continue to prove it wrong. Genesis, the first chapter, we're going back to the beginning. So we just seen the third heaven. Now we're going to take a look at the second heaven. If it's three, it got to be two. It got to be one. Genesis 1, the first chapter, and we're going to read verses 6 through 10, and then we're going to read verses 14, 14 through 20. Genesis 1, the first chapter, and we're going to read verses 6 through 10, then we're going to skip to verses 14 through 20. Again, a simple lesson, but you've got to read your Bible in order to know this. Because if some people on the street will stump you and you'll be sitting there trying to call Brother Jeff, Brother Drake, Brother Matt, trying to find the answers when you can just, it's just simply opening your Bible up to Genesis 1 and read. Genesis 1, give me verse, verse 6, Matt, when you get it. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. Uh-huh. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. Go ahead. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. Yes, so he called that firmament heaven. So you got that firmament that he called heaven, that the sun, moon, and the stars are. Then above that firmament, you got a what? A body of water. That's where you get your rain and all of that from. Then above that, you got this other firmament, and then you got what? The third heaven. Read, Matt. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place. Yes. And let the dry land appear. Uh-huh. And it was so. So now, he done went to the land. So now it was flooded with water. So, so he said, now, let what, Matt? Read that again, verse 9. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together. So let them be gathered together and what? Unto one place. Unto one place and what? And let the dry land appear. And let the dry land appear and what? And it was so. And it was so. And it happened. Verse 10. And God called the dry land earth. So he called that dry land when the waters receded back. He called it earth. And what else? And the gathering together of the waters called he seas. Uh-huh. And God saw that it was good. Skip down to verse 14 and read. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night. Go ahead. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. So now, we, this verse 14 right here, this is what you got to keep in your mind throughout the rest of this lesson. Read it one more time. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. So he said, 
to divide the day from the night. He's giving you the meaning of these things that are placed in the firmament. Read. And let them be for signs and for seasons. So he said, let them be for signs and for seasons. What else? And for days and years. And for days and years. He didn't say, and for to worship them. He gave you the meaning and the purpose of them. Read, Matt. And let them be for lights in the firmament of heaven. Yes. To give light upon the earth. To give light upon the earth. That's their job. And what else? And it was so. And it was so. And it happened. Read. And God made two great lights. Uh-huh. The greater light to rule the day. The greater light to rule the day. And what else? And the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. So we know that greater light is the what? Sun. It's the sun. And then the other light is what? It's the moon. Keep reading. And God set them in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth. So he hung them in the firmament of heaven. We can go right out there right now. Don't look at it. But it's there. We can see the sun. Go ahead. And to rule over the day and over the night. Uh-huh. And to divide the light from the darkness. Yes. And God saw that it was good. Yes. So he told you to rule over the day and to rule over the night. So you got two parts of a day. You got the daytime part of a day and you got the nighttime part of the day. But we know that the nighttime part comes first. That's where everybody get confused at. Because the book tells you what? Evening and a morning makes a day. Not 12.01 a.m. Where we at, Matt? Verse 19. Read it. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Was the who day? Was the fourth day. Was the fourth day. Verse 20. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that have life and the fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. So we know and we see that fowl that flies above. We know that as what? Birds. So you mean to tell me a bird is flying in heaven? He's flying in the second heaven. Airplanes, those of you that fly, again, those of you that fly, <laughs> the airplane also flies in the second heaven. I'm going to get there one day Amen. so I can look out those windows and then close it back down. <laughs> so now, let's go to our next place. Let's go to Psalms, the 19th chapter. Psalms 19, and we're going to read one verse, verse number one. Psalms 19, and we're going to read one verse, verse number one. So this is very simple. Psalms 19, verse 1, Matt, when you get it, read. The heavens declare the glory of God. Yes. And the firmament showeth his handiwork. Yes. So the heavens, with the S again, declare the glory of God. And the firmament showeth his handiwork. Mm -hmm. So again, we can walk right outside that door and look up. We can see the clouds and we can see the sun. And at nighttime, we can walk right outside and we can see the moon and we can see the stars because those are his handiwork. He commanded it, he said it, and it was done. It was created. Amen. Let's go to our next place, Genesis. We're going back to the book of Genesis. Should have told you to hold your spot. I'm, forgive me for that. Genesis 11. And we're going to read verses 1 through 9. Genesis, the 11th chapter, and we're going to read verses 1 through 9. And we're going to take a look at a story out of the Bible that most folks twist. And don't read what's on the pages of the book. Dealing with the Tower of Babel. Genesis 11, give me verse 1, Matt, when you get it. 
and the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. Don't know what that language was? Don't say. Read. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar. Yes. And they dwelt there. Yes. And they said one to another, go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. Uh-huh. And they had brick for stone and slime had they for Mount Mortar. Go ahead. And they said, go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto the heaven. Okay, agree. And let, and, let, and let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Yes, so in that verse four, even when I was young as a child, I was taught that they was trying to build a tower to go to heaven. Read that verse again, Matt. Verse four, they said, go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto the heaven. Whose top may reach unto the heavens. Not reach in heaven, but unto heaven. Talking about the second. That's what it's talking about. If I jump up off the ground, I just left the ground and went into what? The second heaven. So they just building what we see now when we ride through all our major cities. Birmingham may have one. <laughs> If one, but when we go in all our major cities, we see skyscrapers mm -hmm. that goes up into the heavens. Mm -hmm. Read, Matt. Lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. So they were building a place where they all can be in one area. Instead of building something wide, they built something straight up. Read, Matt. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower, which the children of men built it. Uh -huh. And the Lord said... Oh, man, hold oh, right there. So if they built it up to the third heaven, he would have to come down. He'd be like, oh, hey, man, what y'all doing? <laughs> no, he had to come down. Verse 6, Matt. And the Lord said, behold, the people is one. And they have all one language. And this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Uh huh. Go to, let us go down and there and confound their language. Yeah, so he said, let us go down there again. All he had to do was to just step right on that building and just go right on down. Go down them stairs, down under where they was at. But he said, let us go down, down there. Read, Matt. Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. Yes. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Uh-huh. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did confound the language of all the earth. Uh -huh. And from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. Yes, because the commandment was what? Be fruitful and multiply and what? Replenish the earth. Replenish the earth, not overpopulate one area. But that's going into another lesson. But that tower that was built, it was not built to go to the third heaven. It just reached up into what is called the second heaven. What we know as a skyscraper or a, 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 a tall, very tall building. So now let's go to Matthew the third chapter, 13th chapter, I'm sorry. Matthew 13. And y'all have to forgive me because I didn't realize I just got my wheels and teeth pulled a few months back and I didn't realize how much I was using my wheels and teeth. Because it's some words now, boy, I have a hard time pronouncing. I tell you, my family just be laughing at me. I, he can't talk. I said, man, those words I normally could say. And I have a hard time. I guess at this old age having them pull, you know, make it harder to talk, but some words just don't roll off, just don't sound right. So y'all bear with me. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. Matthew, the 13th chapter, and we're going to read verses 47 through 50. 
Matthew, the 13th chapter, and we're going to read verses 47 through 50. And I guess that's what I get for making fun of people that talk, that, that didn't have no teeth in their mouth when they were trying to talk. So now I see how it feels. Matthew 13, give me verse 47 when you get it, Matt. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind. Which, when it was full, they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good into a vessels, but cast the bad away. So I want you to pay attention to this parable. Because I never paid attention to it until I actually put it, in this, put it in this lesson. Take it from the top one more time, Matt. Go ahead. Verse 47. Uh-huh. Again, the kingdom of heaven. Is Those what he said. The kingdom of heaven. Is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind. And gathered of every kind. Not just gathered of one kind. Every kind. Read. Which, when it was full, they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good into vessels, but cast the bad away. Yes. So that's even going to the season that we just went, came out of. The feast of what? Harvest. What you take it, the tares, you casting them away, putting the wheat over here. Read. So shall it be at the end of the world. So, so we talking about the world, but he said the kingdom of heaven. Keep reading. The angel shall come forth. Who gonna come forth? The angel shall come forth. Uh huh. And serve the wicked from among the just. So look who gonna do the work. The angel of the Lord is going to come and do the work. And he's going to separate the what, Matt? The wicked. The angel shall come forth uh -huh. and serve the wicked from among the just. So he's going to do the separate. So don't be trying to separate right now. You can move, move over and sit over here, do whatever you need to do. That still ain't going to make them go away. The Lord going to handle that. Where we at, Matt? Top of 50. Read it. And shall cast them into the furnace of fire. Yes. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. So we know what that fire is. The lake of fire. So everything we just described what? Heaven on earth. Ezekiel, the 20th chapter. So we seen the third heaven and we seen the second heaven. Now we just seen heaven on earth. Ezekiel 20, and we're going to read verses 33 to 42. There ain't no phone out here, is it? All right, let's take it from the top. Ezekiel, the 20th chapter, and we're going to read verses 33 to 42. Ezekiel 20. And we're going to read verses 33 to 42. When you get it, Matt, please read. As I live, says the Lord God, uh -huh. surely with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out will I rule over you. Yes, sir. And I will bring you out from among from the people and will gather you out of the countries wherein you are scattered. With the mighty hand and with the stretched out arm and with fury poured out. So we see he going to gather them what? Out of the countries from whence they scattered. So let's see, is he going to gather them out of the countries and then take them up to heaven? Take them up to the third heaven. Go through the second and go to the third. Let's see if that going to happen. Read. I will bring you into the wilderness Whoa, of the people. he said he going to bring them into the wilderness of the people, Matt. And yes, what sir. else? And there will I plead with you face to face. Whoa. And he's going to plead with you face to face in the wilderness of the people right here on earth. Mm -hmm. Read. Like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, so will I plead with you, says the Lord God. Uh huh. And I will cause you to pass under the rod, and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. Yeah, so he's going to cause you to what? Pass under the rod. And he said, I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. And what else? And I will purge out from among you the rebels and them that transgressed against me. Yeah, so we even just read that what? 
in that Matthew the 13th chapter where he gonna do the purging. He gonna purge you what? Purge out from among you the rebels. When he said what? He was gonna separate the just from the unjust. Mm -hmm. The same thing he's doing right here. Right here on earth. Read. I will bring them forth out of the countries where they sojourn. Out of the countries where they sojourn. And what else, Matt? And they shall not enter into the land of Israel. Whoa! And they shall not enter into the land of Israel. He didn't say, and they shall not enter into the third heaven. He said, the land of Israel. Mm -hmm. Read, Matt. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. Yes. As for you, O house of Israel. Now we're going to get down to the house of Israel. Go ahead. Thus said the Lord God. Go ye, serve you every one his idols. Uh -huh. And hereafter also, if you will not hearken unto me, but pollute ye my holy name no more with your gifts and with your idols. Yes, go ahead. For, for in my holy mountain and in the mountain of the height of Israel, said the Lord God, there shall all the house Whoa, so the mountain Israel. will be in the house. Well, in the mountain going to be what? The house of Israel. Go ahead. All of them in the land serve me. There will I accept them, and there will I require your offerings and the first fruit of your oblations with all your holy things. Yes, so he's saying he's going to be there as well. And he's going to accept all of your offerings here on earth. Read. I will accept you with your sweet savor. I will bring you out from the people and gather you out of the countries wherein you have been scattered. And I will be sanctified in you before the heathen. Yes. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I shall bring you into the land of Israel, into the country for which I lifted up my hand to give it to your fathers. Yes, so the same land that he lifted up and gave to our forefathers is the same land he going to have for us here on earth. You ain't going nowhere. Amen. You ain't getting two wings and fly off. John, the 14th chapter. I mean, I just don't, I, I was looking at some, matter of fact, last week when we was looking at that uh, Bible that uh, somebody had uh, at the uh, feast hall. All the angels you see in there, they got two wings. And then they got baby faces. It looked like they got a diaper on them. Come on, man. You can't read that in this book. But that just show you that nobody, not only Israel, but nobody's reading the Bible. When you saw that foolishness, you should have immediately knew something was wrong. John 14, and we're going to read verses 1 through 4. John, the 14th chapter. And we're going to read verses 1 through 4. Dear heaven on earth, when you get it, my brother, please read. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Yes, in so my, believe in me also. Go ahead. In my Father's house are many mansions. Uh-huh. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Yeah, so they read that right there, and they stop. Praise the Lord. But we're going to keep reading. Read. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. Hold, Matt. Hold right there, Matt. He said, and if I go and prepare a place for you. So it's something that just caught my eye right there. He said, and if I go, if I go and prepare a place for you. Because guess what? There's a chance I may not prepare a place for you. Mm -hmm. So notice that word, if. That just caught my eye. If I go and prepare a place for you. He said, what? Well, I will come again. So he didn't say he was just going to stay there and wait on you to come up in your, to your mansion. He said, I'm going to come again. And what, Matt? 
I will come again and receive you unto myself. So he going to come again. He going to bring that place with him and he going to receive you to him. And what else, Matt? That where I am, there ye may be also. Whoa, that where I am, there ye may be also. <laughs> Whoa. Look at that. The word may be, Matt. Mm -hmm. If maybe. and may be. Mm. One word, but look how powerful it is. The word if and maybe. Mm. Where we at, Matt? Top of four. Read it. And whither I go, ye know, and the way you know. You know because what? You know what the scriptures say. It says that what we just read. Did we not just read out the old in Ezekiel? And he told you where it was going to be? In the land that your forefathers had? which is Jerusalem, they knew that if they read and studied the scriptures. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to see it through a vision of John. Revelations 21. Revelations, the 21st chapter. We're going to read verses 1 through 4, and we're going to skip to verses 9 through 12. Revelation I always mess up every now and then and put an S on that. Revelation, the 21st chapter, we're going to read verses 1 through 4, and then we're going to skip to verses 9 through 12. And believe it or not, our beloved brother Troy out of Dallas brought that to my attention because I never paid it no attention that it's Revelation. I always say Revelations with an S. And I was watching one of his lessons, and he pointed that out, and I was like, Duh. Revelation, the 21st chapter. Give me verse 1, Matt, when you get it. And I saw a new, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. Yes. And there was no more sea. Uh-huh. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down. Whoa, from, Matt. Coming down? Coming down from God. We weren't going up to it. It was coming down from God, right? Coming down from God. And what? Out of heaven. Out of, whoa, wait a minute, Matt. Not out of heaven. Coming down from God, out of heaven. And what? Prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. So we see the word, we see another one word, prepare. What did we read Jesus say? He said, I go to prepare a place for you. This is the place that he prepared. Read. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. He said the tabernacle of God is with men. Not that the men had to go and come to the tabernacle of God, but he brought it here with men. And if you want to dwell with him, it's going to be here. Where we at, Matt? Top of four. Read it. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, yes. neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Yes, that sounds so good. Because I tell you, these feet hurt. And I should get my teeth back. And y'all understand what I'm saying? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So now, the next place we're going to go to, Skip I'm going to give this. Oh, I'm sorry, Matt. I'm, I'm jumping the gun. I'm getting hyped for this next one. Because the, the next place we're going is the reason why I did this lesson. But skip down to verse 9 and read, Matt. I'm so sorry. Don't let me leave none of the word of God out. Read. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, full of seven last plagues, and talk with me, saying, Come hither, and I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. Yes. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from mm, God. Mm, mm. So he didn't carry him away and show him the saints going up into heaven, did he? Mm -mm. 
he carried him away and showed him New Jerusalem coming down from heaven. Read. Having the glory of God, and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Go ahead. And had a wall great and high, and had 12 gates. Whoa, Mac, hold up. How many gates? 12 gates. It didn't have one gate? It one pearly gate? 12 gates. Poor St. Peter. <laughs> Said 12 gates. And what else, Matt? And the gates. And the gates, 12 angels. 12 angels. And the names written thereon. Uh huh. Which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Yes, yeah, so on every gate, you had 12 angels. And on every gate, you had the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. So that's what we want to do. We want to enter into one of those 12 gates. We don't know what gate we're going in, but we're working to go in one of them. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So now, I got a little excited, family, so y'all had to forgive me. So go ahead and turn to uh, Genesis, the first chapter, and we're going to go to verses 14 and 19. But this is why the reason I put this lesson together it's because a post I saw on Facebook from a, from a friend of mine, and when I saw it, it stuck me like a knife in the chest. I, I, I was hurt because the post was talking about basically moon bathing. And with moon bathing, the definition of moon bathing, when it talks about moon bathing, is also known as Chandra. It's a practice, of moon, a practice of bathing in the moonlight for purification and emotional well-being. It is thought to calm the mind, balance emotions, and provide a sense of tranquility. I had to say that slow. So it's called moon bathing. So all you got to do is go on Google and Google moon bathing and it'll give you that definition. So now, if you notice, I said moon bathing is also known as Chandra. So now you need to know who Chandra is. Chandra is a Hindu goddess of the moon. So now, if you call yourself a Christian, and walking in the word of Christ, why are you walking in Hinduism? In Hinduism, the moon has a great significance. It represents many aspects of creation, life, emotions, mood, and mind. As these, all, as these are all governed by the moon. This planet is also associated with romance, pleasant nights, intense moments, loneliness, and mood swings. So again, the source for that uh, definition dealing with uh, it being in Hinduism is Google again. So now, show you other nations and other religions that practice this Moon. Now, some of these names, you have to forgive the brother because uh, it's going to be hard to pronounce, but the Maya, I know you know what the Maya, they, were, they called the moon goddess Exhel. I-X-C-H-E-L. Now, Josh may can pronounce that better than me, but uh, in ancient Rome, she was known as Luna. I know y'all heard of the Luna before. In ancient Greece, Selene, S-E-L-E-N-E. -E. In ancient Egypt, Sefket, S-E-F-K-E-T. The Tibets known her as Lasea, L-A-S-Y-A. -A. The Chinese known as Yun Lin, K U A N Y I N. The Celts, she is 
think it's Rhyonin. R-H-I-A-N-N-O-N. I had to be careful not to say Rihanna, but. So the source again for this is through Google. So when you're doing these things, all this different incense burning and sage and all of this stuff, look up the history behind it. Don't just say, ooh, that sound good, and ooh, that's what that do, and ooh, that is a good scent to relax me, and ooh, I do feel about it, and ooh, when I did go out there and stand in the moon, ooh, I did feel a certain way. That's a way to draw you in into worshiping it. The word of God should make you feel that way. So now, again, we're going to Genesis, the first chapter. <clears throat> We're going to read verses 14 through 19. We're going to deal with the stars, moon, and the sun. And do we, should we be worshiping those? Genesis 1, and we're going to read verses 14 through 19. We already went over this once. That's why I told you to remember it. But we're going to go back it again just in case you forgot. Genesis 1, give me verse 14, Matt. And God said... Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. To divide the day from the night. Giving you the meaning. I'm going to go over it one more time. Go ahead. And let them be for signs and for seasons. And let them be for signs and for seasons. What else? And for days and for years. And for days and for years. So to my beloved brother that, that inspired this lesson, no, trust me. I have no ill will towards you or ill will in it towards anybody that's doing this. The only thing I'm asking you to do is stop. Because those things have a purpose. Mm -hmm. And God created them and gave them a purpose. Keep reading, Matt. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven. Yes. To give light upon the earth, and it was so. So they were created to give light upon the earth. And what else, Matt? And God made two great lights. Yes. The greater light to rule the day. Uh-huh. And the lesser light to rule the night. Yes. He made the stars also. Go ahead. And God set them in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth. So he set them in the firmament of heaven. What we read, what we talking about, the second heaven to give what? Light upon the earth. Read, Matt. And to rule over the day and over the night, uh huh, and to divide the light from the darkness, and God saw that it was good. Yes. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Okay, so now we see what their purpose is, to give light in the day and to give light in the night. So now, let's go to Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter. Deuteronomy 4. And we're going to read verses 15 through 20. Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter. And we're going to read verses 15 through 20. So if there's anybody that's on here that didn't know no better, that was doing it in ignorance, please take these verses down. Stop doing it. And watch what this first verse say. Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter. And watch what verse 15 say. When you get it, Matt, read. Take ye therefore good heed unto yourselves. Take ye therefore good heed unto yourselves. What, Matt? For ye saw no manner of similitude on the day that the Lord spake unto you in Horeb out of the midst of the fire. That's right. So when the Lord spoke out the midst of the fire, he gave no similitude to them because he know us. As soon as we see something, we're going to go down and see can we try to make it in that same exact image. That's why he's saying what he's saying. Read. Lest ye corrupt yourself. Lest you corrupt yourself. And what, Matt? And make you a graven image. And make you a graven image because he know us. We got to go down and make something in that image and we got to say, this is God. And I'm going to carry God everywhere I go. I'm going to wear him around my neck to let you know that I serve the Lord. Mm -hmm. But this don't mean nothing what I'm wearing around my neck. You looking at my actions. Your actions is going to show whether you serve the Lord or not. Read, Matt. 
the similitude of any figure, the likeness of male or female, the likeness of any beast that is on the earth. Whoa, Mac, look at all what you read. Mac, read that 17 again and read it loud. I want them to hear this. The likeness of any beast that is on the earth. The likeness of any beast, so any cow, camel, anything that you call yourself worshiping, he telling you no. What else? The likeness of any winged fowl that flyeth in the air. So you got that dove on your car with that little olive branch or whatever that is in his mouth, take him off. That don't represent Jesus. Read. The likeness of anything that creepeth on the ground. Anything that creepeth on the ground, if Jimmy the Cricket or whatever it may be, no. What else? The likeness of any fish. The that, likeness of any fish. So if you got that fish on the back of your car or that dove or whatever it may be, go and take it off. It's no representation of God. This is out of his mouth. Read. The likeness of any fish that is in the water beneath the earth. Yes. And lest thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven, and when thou seest the sun and the moon and the stars, even all the hosts of heaven, shouldest be driven to worship them yes. and serve them, uh -huh. which the Lord thy God hath divided under all nations, under the whole heaven. Yes. So it's telling you don't even go from worshiping the things that the fish, the animals, the birds, and to even look up and worship the sun, moon, and the stars. He telling you no. Mm -hmm. Where we at, Matt? In the 20. Read, you read I mean, 20? Top of 20? Read 20. But the Lord have taken you and brought you forth out of the iron furnace. Oh, Matt. Who taken you and brought you forth out of the iron furnace? The Lord. The Lord did. Not the sun, moon, and the stars. Not that bird. Not that fish. The Lord did it. Read, Mac. And brought you forth out of the iron furnace, even out of Egypt, uh -huh. to be unto him a people of inheritance, as ye are this day. Even as you are this day. Man, he telling you, don't do it, family. Deuteronomy 17. Turn right over to Deuteronomy 17, chapter. We're going to read verses 2 through 5. And we're going to see what happened to you if you did bow down and worship those things, all those things that we named. Because he told you in the commandments what? Have no other gods. And definitely don't bow down and worship. Deuteronomy 17, give me verse 2, Matt. If there be found among you within any of thy gates which the Lord thy God giveth thee, man or woman, that have wrought wickedness in the sight of the Lord thy God, in transgressing his covenant, what? and have gone and served other gods. Hold right there, Matt. So he said, gone and transgressed his covenant. What transgressing is what? The breaking of the law. What law are we talking about? The Ten Commandments. Because he told you don't have no other God. What else, Matt? And have gone and served other gods and worshiped them, either the sun or moon or any of the host of heaven, which I have not commanded. He hadn't commanded you to worship them things. He told you not to. What's going to happen, Matt? And it be told thee, and thou hast heard of it, and inquired diligently, and behold, it be true, and I think Wait a minute, hold right there. The Lord said he gonna inquire, didn't you show? Mm -hmm. That was sister nigga did that? Mm -hmm. You sure? Yes, it was. What's gonna happen, Matt? And the thing certain that such abomination is wrought in Israel, uh -huh. then shall thou bring forth that man or that woman yes. which have committed that wicked thing Woo. Go ahead. unto thy gates, even that man or that woman and, sh and shall stone them with stones till they die. Oh my gosh. So notice he didn't say man. You know, a lot of times when he said man, women like to try to say, well, he ain't talking about us. He ain't, he ain't said woman. He said man or woman. Mm -hmm. So you better take heed to what's written on the pages of this book. Isaiah 
the 47th chapter. Isaiah 47. And we're going to read verses 1 through 15. Isaiah, the 47th chapter. And we're going to read verses 1 through 15. It's serious. We got to take it serious. Because we got brothers and sisters out there that's doing this in error. That's weighing those crosses. That's having those things on the back of their car. Then you got a lot of them that know it, but they guess what? You tell them about it, and you see them the next day, and they still got it on. Hey, you did your job. Mm -hmm. The Lord said, you are a what? A watchman. Warn the people. That's all you're supposed to do. You don't supposed to go hit them across the head and take it off and throw it away. No. Because guess what they're going to do? They're going to go and buy them another one anyway. Isaiah 47. Let me get verse 1, Matt. Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground. There is no throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans. For thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. Mm -hmm. Take the millstone and grind meal. Uncover thy locks. Make bare the leg. Uncover, uncover the thigh. Pass over the river. So notice who he's talking about right here. He's talking about the daughter of the Chaldeans right now. For thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. So this, we're we talking about the Chaldeans right now. But pay attention to we going to 15 on this. So pay attention. Read. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered. Yeah, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance, and I will not meet thee as a man. Uh huh. As for our Redeemer, the Lord of hosts is his name, the Holy One of Israel. Yeah, so we see right there, the Lord of hosts is his name, the Holy One of Israel. Read. Sit thou silent. And get thee into darkness, O daughter of the Chaldeans. Uh -huh. For thou shalt no more be called the Lady of Kingdoms. Mm -hmm. Read. I was wroth with my people. I have polluted mine inheritance. So now he done went to Israel right here. He said he was wroth with his people. He polluted his inheritance. So brother, if you listening that I was talking to the other day, that man that you so mad at, the white man, he didn't do it. The Lord telling you right now, he did it. Take that from the top. I was wroth with my people. He was wroth with us. What else? I have polluted mine inheritance. He polluted his inheritance. What else? And given them into thine hand. He gave us into the hands of the enemy. Read. Thou didst show them no mercy. Yes. Upon the ancient hast thou verily heavily laid thy yoke. Yeah. He said they ain't showed us no mercy. We see it now to this day. We see it on the job. Yes, Lord, we see it on the job. Mm. Where they move that man in a position. This man and being towed up some of everything on the job. And they pick him up and put him on the shoulders and carry him around the mill and get him a high position over you that's come to work every day and do your job to the fullest. But they promote him and put him over you. But the Lord said he was going to do that. So guess what? When we see it, we just have to smile and move on. Because mm -hmm. that's part of that persecution that we're going to get. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Where we at, Matt? Top of seven. Read it. And thou saidest, I shall be a later lady forever, so that thou didst not lay these things to thy heart, neither didst remember the latter end of it. Yeah, so they didn't lay it to heart, the, the cruel and unusual punishment that they was doing to us. And they forgot what's going to happen at the latter end. Read. Therefore, hear now this. Thou that art given to pleasures, that dwellest cares, cares, carelessly, uh -huh. that says in thine heart, I am, and none else besides me. I shall not sit as a widow, neither shall I know the loss of children. Yeah, so think about that. That's the way they feel right now. Because they on top. They the big show right now. We in the times of the Gentiles right now. So everything they do look like it turned to gold. Fools go. Read. 
But these two things shall come to thee in a moment, in one day, the loss of children and widowhood. Yes. They shall come upon in their perfection for the multitude of thy sorcery. Uh -huh. And for the great abundance of thine enchantment. Yes. For thou hast trusted in thy wickedness. Thou hast said, none see of me. Thy wisdom and thy knowledge, it hath perverted thee. And thou hast said in thine heart, I am, and none else beside me. Yes, sir. Read, Matt. Therefore shall evil come upon thee. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not know from whence it, it riseth. Yes. And mischief shall fall upon thee. Thou shalt not be able to put it off. And desolation shall come upon thee suddenly, which thou shalt not know. Yes. He told you, Jesus even told you out of his own mouth, that no man knoweth the hour when he going to return. So look how fast he going to come, boom, just like that. You on top, next thing you know, boom, it's over. Mm. Read. Stand now with thine enchantments and with the multitude of thy sorceries, wherein thou hast labored from thy youth. If so be, thou shalt be able to profit. If so be, thou mayest prevail. Uh -huh. Thou art wearied in the multitude of thy counsels. Let not the astrologer. Oh, now pay attention to this. Hope we don't have none of these people in here that do these things. Go ahead. The stargazers, uh -huh. the monthly progno prognosticators. Yeah, we, ain't, hey, we don't have none of those forecasters in here, dude. Pay attention. Read. Stand up and save thee from these things that shall come upon thee. Yes, so we know the people, the main ones that's putting all this stuff out here, the horoscopes and the fortune telling and all this, the monthly procrastinators and all that stuff like that. We know the ones that's putting that out there, forecasting things. It ain't us. But we running behind them. Father Rico, check and see what my heart Rico said. They tell me that Libra in, in this and that, we compatible. So you run out there and try to find you that, that sign that they say you compatible to. <laughs> used to have a sign, used to have an old song back in the day. Some of y'all used to remember. What's your sign, girl? Is it compatible to mine? <laughs> no. <laughs> Read. Behold, they shall be as stubble. The fire shall burn them. Yes. They shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame. Uh-huh. There shall not be a coal to warm at, nor fire to sit before it. Yes, sir. Uh, go ahead. Thus shall they be unto thee with whom thou hast labored. Even thy merchants from thy youth, they shall wander every one to his quarter. None shall save thee. Yes. So we see that those that are further in the affliction, they're going to be punished for that. But we sit up here and we tag along and follow the, the things that they do. Pick up the gods that they, that they have. Mm. Worship the things that they worship. You see the downfall that's going to happen, don't let that happen to you. Put that phone in that old when we used to get that newspaper and go through it and try to find that stuff. Put that stuff down. Serve the Lord. Jeremiah 10. Know we know about this Jeremiah 10. We got three more places after this Jeremiah 10. Jeremiah 10, we're going to read verses 1 and 2, and then we're going to skip to 10 through 14. Jeremiah the 10th chapter, we're going to read verses 1 through 2, and we're going to skip to verses 10 through 14. Because this Jeremiah 10, especially when we read that and was looking at it with, as that tree, mm. this is what brought me in. This part of what brought me in when I saw that because it stood out to me. Mm -hmm. Man, that can't be nothing but the Christmas tree. Yeah. Family on your own, read that whole Jeremiah 10. Jeremiah 10, give me verse 1, Matt. Hear ye the word of the Lord, which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Uh-huh. Thus said the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. Yes, so we just read about the heathen, the Chaldeans. It said, thus says the Lord, learn not the ways of the heathen. The heathen talking about the other nations. This ain't no un else the heathen, this talking about the other nations. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. Mm -hmm. Skip down to verse 10 and read, Matt. Like I said, read the rest of that on your own. Skip down to verse 10 and read, Matt. 
But the Lord is the true God. Who is the true God, man? The Lord is the true God. Read. He is the living God. Yes, he is. An everlasting king. Yes. At his wrath, the earth shall tremble. Uh-huh. And the nation shall not be able to abide his, ind his indignation. Yes, sir. Read, Matt. Thus shall you say unto them, the gods that have not made the heavens and the earth. Whoa. So them little gods that you worshiping, them little trinkets, they did not make the heavens and the earth. Read, Matt. Even they shall perish from the earth. Whoa, they're going to perish too. Go ahead. And from under these heavens. Uh-huh. He have made the earth by his power. He have established the world by his wisdom mm -hmm. and have stretched out the heavens by his discretion. Yes, sir. Read, Matt. When he uttereth his voice, there is a multitude of waters in the heavens. And he causes the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. Yes, sir. He maketh lightnings with rain. Look at that. So when you see them storms come along, know who they coming from. Thank you, Jesus. Because he give us what we need at the time. We might be crying, man, it didn't rain on my parade. Man, I was trying to go out here and do this and do that. But he doing it for his purpose. For his purpose. Might keep your buddy in to keep you from out there breaking his laws. Read. And bringing forth the wind out of his treasure. Uh huh. Every man is brooded in his knowledge. Yes, he is. Every founder is confounded by the graven image. Whoa, look at that. <laughs> that graven image, boy, that, that doggone cross, boy. We definitely are confounded by that. Mm -hmm. You ain't gonna tell us otherwise. Mm -mm. Especially not Israel. Mm -mm. I know the earrings, the, the, uh, the cross, got a belt buckle with it on, everything. Read, Matt. For his molten image is falsehood. Yes. And there is no breath in them. There ain't no breath in it. It's telling you his molten image. What is that cross made out of? It's made out of what? Molten silver or gold? Nine times out of ten, it's made out of ten. It ain't even real. But you sat up there and spent all that money on it. Mm. Jeremiah, the 31st chapter. And we're going to read one verse. Jeremiah 31, and we're going to read one verse, verse 35. And we didn't seen this before, but we're going to see it again. The Lord of hosts. He is the Lord of all the hosts, of all his creation. Jeremiah 31, give me verse 35, Matt, when you get it. Thus said the Lord, which giveth the sun for a light by day, and the ordinances of the moon and of the stars for a light by night, which divide the sea when the waves thereof roar. The Lord of hosts is his name. Yes, yeah, so he is the one that created all those things. He created them again for a purpose. Who? The Lord of hosts. So now, let's see it in action. Joshua 10. Joshua, the 10th chapter. You see, if you worship and serve the Lord of hosts, he can even give you different powers, but it's going to be through him. Joshua, the 10th chapter. We're going to read verses 1, one through 2, and then we're going to skip to 5 to 14. Joshua 10. We're going to read verses 1 through 2, and then we're going to skip to verses 5 through 14. And we're going to watch these kings come against Gibeon and Joshua. But Joshua got somebody in his corner. He got an army, true enough, but he got somebody else in his corner. The Lord of hosts. Joshua 10, give me verse 1, Matt. Now it came to pass, when they dawned is it that? King of Jerusalem had heard how Joshua had taken Ai and had utterly destroyed it. As he had done to Jericho and her king, so he had done to Ai and her king. Uh huh. And how the inhabitants of Gibeon had made peace with Israel and were among them. Yes, go ahead. That they feared greatly because of Gibeon was great was a great city. Uh huh. As one of the royal cities. And because it was greater than Ai, and all the men thereof were mighty. Yeah, so now they were afraid because what? They didn't partner up with Joshua. 
So now these kings said, whoa, wait a minute, man, we got to do something. We got to bring this, we got to bring this city of Gibeon down. Skip down to verse 5 and read. Therefore the five kings of the Amorites, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Armuth, the king of Lachish, the king of Eglon, gathered themselves together and went up, they and all their hosts, and they camped before Gibeon and made war against it. Whoa, so we see they even had hosts. Remember what host is. It's just a great multitude of people. That's all it is. Read. And the men of Gibeon sent unto Joshua to the camp to Gilgal, saying, Slack not thy hand from thy servant. Come up to us quickly and save us and help us. For all the kings of the Amorites that dwell in the mountains are gathered together against us. Yes, go ahead, jo go ahead, Matt. So Joshua ascended from Gilgal, he and all the people of war with him, and all the mighty men of Balaam. Yes. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Fear them not, for I have delivered them into thine hand. There shall not a man of them stand before thee. Look at that. They was already defeated before it even started. Because he's a servant of the Lord. He got the angels around him to protect him. So we, look, it didn't stop them. The Lord didn't stop them from coming. The battle still happened. So the battle still going to happen, people. But you got to have the Lord in your, on your side in your corner fighting your battle for you. Amen. Not saying the people ain't going to come against you. But the Lord is going to fight the battle. Don't put up your fish trying to fight it. Let him fight it. Jeff. Read. Joshua, therefore came up unto them suddenly and went up from Gilgag all night. Yes. And the Lord discomforted them before Israel and slew them with a great slaughter at Gibeon and chased them along the way that goeth up unto Beth Horon and smote them to aid. And smote them to Azekah, uh -huh. and unto Machakiadah. Yes, sir. Read it, Mac. And it came to pass, as they fled from before Israel, and were in the going to go down to Beth Horon, the Lord cast down gray stones from heaven upon them. Hold up. Who cast down them gray stones? The Lord did. He took care of his uh, Joshua and Gibeon's enemies. Look, by Gibeon simply joining with Joshua, now they got a protector. Now they got a shield and buckler. The Lord. Mm -hmm. Read. Unto Azekah, and they died. And there were more which died with hailstones, and they with whom the children of Israel slew with the sword. Yes. So the Lord took out just about all of them. Read. Then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou moon in the valley of Ajalon. So look what came out of Joshua's mouth. He said what? Son, stand still. Because he knew what kind of God he served. That he can ask the sun to stand still and the Lord will make it happen. Mm. Read. And the sun stood still and the moon stayed until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. You know, wait a minute. I don't know if y'all know about this or not. How many of y'all have been out playing outside playing and having a grand time? Seemed like everybody in the neighborhood then came to one little area and y'all playing. But all of a sudden it started to get dark. And it's, you're like, oh, man, it's getting dark. We got to go in the house because, hey, I know I had to go in the house because the street light was coming on. But it seemed like it ruined the day. But some days you were out there playing, it seemed like the sun just stayed up a little longer and y'all were just out there having a good time. Joshua asked the Lord for the sun just to stay up a little longer so we can defeat all our enemies. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Go ahead, Mac. Is not this written in the book of Jasher? Yes. Jasher, so the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and hasted not to go down about a whole day. Go ahead, Matt. And there was no day like that before it or after it, that the Lord hearkened unto the voice of a man. <laughs> Read that again, Matt. Take that verse 14 again. And there was no day like that before it or after it. No day like it before or after it. That what, Matt? That the Lord hearkened unto the voice of a man. Yes, sir. For the Lord fought for Israel. The Lord fought for Israel. So you want the Lord to fight for you. 
but you simply got to be obedient just like Joshua. If you wonder what Joshua did, just bag up and read. That's all you got to do. Because when Moses was alive, Joshua was right there. Let's go to our last place. Let's go to Psalms 136. Psalms 136. And we're going to read verses 1 through 12. Psalms 136. The 136 Psalm. And we're going to read verses 1 through 12. And it's, it's fun, I have to laugh. Because on my paper, I got an S on Psalms. <laughs> Psalm 136, and we're going to read verses 1 through 12. When you get verse 1, Matt, please read. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Yes. For he is good. For his mercy endure forever. Yes, it does. Read, Matt. Oh, give thanks unto the God of gods. For his mercy endureth forever. Uh-huh. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endureth forever. Yes, how many times we got to say it? Yes, sir. Read. To him who alone doeth great wonders, uh -huh. for his mercy endureth forever. Yes, it do. Go ahead, Matt. To him, to, to him that by wisdom made the heavens, for his mercy endureth forever. He made the heavens, his mercy endureth forever. For, read, read, Matt. To him that stretched out the earth above the waters, for his mercy endureth forever. Read, Matt. To him that made the great lights, for his mercy endureth forever. He made the great lights. Read, Matt. The sun to rule by day, for his mercy endureth forever. What else, Matt? The moon and stars to rule by night, for his mercy endureth forever. Go ahead. To him that smote Egypt in their firstborn, for his mercy endureth forever. Go ahead. And brought out Israel from among them, for his mercy endureth forever. Uh -huh. With a strong hand and with a stretched out arm, for his mercy endureth forever. So the Lord did all of this. Man didn't do this, the Lord did it. And what, family? His mercy endureth forever. forever. So with that said, that finishes up the lesson, what? The host of heaven. Praise the Lord. Thank you.